Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Makeover Monday, Week 22, Watch Me Viz. This week, we're looking at the Plastic Waste Makers Index, a very important topic. My name is Andy Crabill. I'm the head coach of the Information Lab Data School, and I'm going to take you through the data set, explore it a bit, and then create a final visualization. If you have any comments along the way, feel free to leave them in the chat, and I'll respond to them if I can. Let's get started. So this is the original visualization. It's looking at the top 20 polymer producers. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see it a bit better. Um, so basically it's the top 20 producers of single use plastic waste. So we've got Exxon, Dow, a lot of companies you've probably heard of before. Basically, um, to me, it looks like a lot of big oil, um, pharmaceuticals, uh, chemical companies, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to first look through this, um, uh, sorry, wrong way. We want to first look through this report and see if there's any interesting, anything interesting that we could maybe pull out of this. Um, I think there were, I, I quickly looked through this before and there were a few things in particular um, that I thought were useful, but let me just scan through this real quick. Sorry, this might be boring for a second. Um, I guess first was to understand kind of the process that works here. So they produce the polymer, um, they then trade it, it gets used, and then it goes back as waste. So pretty simple process. Um, some of their key findings, so 20 polymer producers accounted for more than half of all single-use uh, plastic waste generated globally in 2019. So this particular visualization is very similar. So the, the, the two bars combined add up to the total. Uh, the uh, white colored bar is a flexible format and the um, the darker color is a rigid format. I'm thinking that um, I didn't really see a definition of what flexible versus rigid means, but what I'm thinking about in my head is think about like a plastic bottle, like a, maybe a Coca-Cola bottle or something. Some of them are really squishy and some of them are a bit more firm. So I'm thinking that probably is what that means. We do have that data. So if I flip over to the data set, that's going to be these two columns. Uh, the, the original visualization is based off of this last column here, the total contribution, and then these two add up to the total. So flexible format versus rigid format. Um, okay, and let's flip back over here. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down. We don't have, we're not looking at the information on the investors, so we can skip through that. Um, I believe, what's this one here? Okay, industry failure. All right, I think we can skip that as well. Geopolitical problem, I think we all know that too. Okay, so here's the um, the top 100 producers. This is the data set that we're using uh, this week. So the first column is the number of assets producing in scope polymer. So I'm going to assume, um, I, I, again, I didn't find the exact def definition of this, but I'm going to assume this is maybe like the number of plants or facilities or something that are producing the polymers. Now, maybe we can then use that to somehow come up with um, uh, maybe a, a ratio or something like that. So, and then they've got the estimated production of in-scope polymers. And let's look at this uh, over here. So production of in-scope polymers, and this is in millions of metric tons. Um, okay, and then the contribution to single-use waste. Okay, so we could look at maybe this 11.2 or 55 divided by 11.2 or something like that to look at maybe the, the ratio of, um, okay, and let's see here. And if I just, these are just all the companies, and then this next one goes to the investors, which we don't, aren't concerned about. Okay, so what else do we have here? All right, so again, this is the method. Yep. And I think that's it. So I'm going to just bring up this table just so I can remind myself of, of what the visualization looks like. Now, the first thing, uh, so this is the data set. Um, it's all the same columns. I'll just go ahead and get started. So let me name this Plastic Waste Makers Index and go to the sheet. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to rebuild the original visualization to make sure I understand it. Now this rank column, if you see this rank column here, uh, that doesn't need to be a measure. So I'm going to drag that up and make that a dimension. And I'm going to put polymer producer on the rows and uh, total contribution to the columns and sort that in descending order. And we have something similar to the original visualization, but this is a bar chart. So I'm just going to call this bar chart. 
not very interesting. But uh, let me go ahead and now we want to create it. So if you look at the original visualization, let me just go to the data sets. This might be a bit simpler here. Let's go to the data set because I can see the original visualization here. Maybe. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so we can see it's like rounded bars and it uh, looks like this is the top 20. Okay, so let's start by again putting the polymer producers on here. Um, I'm going to look at the total contribution. I'm going to filter. I'm going to choose all, uh, use all, and then top 20. Okay and then sort that in descending order, and we have the same list. But what we want to do is, you see these are, it might be a bit hard to see. Let me see if I can open this in a new tab. There we go. So we can see that these are rounded bars. So um, I'm going to try to remember how I do rounded bars, because I know I've done them before. So I'm, I'm going to leave this here, and I think I need to do something like the average of zero. It's been a long time since I've done this. And I'm going to make it a combined axis. So we get something like that. Um, I'm going to make it a line, and you'll see it goes from one to the other. I'm going to put measure names onto path. And now if I just make the size bigger, you'll see we can now see we've got some rounded bars. Uh, yeah, so that looks like, uh, and then maybe I do is I'll just do standard, and there we go. So now we have something similar to the original visualization. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to format my axis. And I'm going to just make it, uh, uh, let's see, they have it as no decimals. And it goes from 0 to 6. Um, OK, and then let me give this a title. Uh, then, uh, 2019 MMT of single use plastic waste generator of single use plastic waste generator. Okay, 2019. Okay, so let's go with that. So that looks the same. It looks like they also probably got rid of the grid lines. <clears throat> so I'll turn my grid lines on and back off. Get rid of my zero line. And so they have the, uh, you can see how they, it looks like they have their axis rulers. So maybe I'll, actually, why don't I go ahead and make the background color the same. So let me format the worksheet and more colors and I'm going to pick the color off of this and hit OK and then my bars I'm going to change the color of this to match these here and hit OK okay so we get something like that and then these are the same color so let's format and make those the same looks like they're maybe bold well that didn't really do a whole lot did it make this a bit bigger. Okay, I can hide that title. And I'm going to format my axis and also make that like that. Okay, so we got something something close. Um, I don't know what font they're using, otherwise I could probably look at that as well. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my axis and I'm going to have it I need to play around with the range a bit to get the left edge of the, of the um, rounded bar chart to look um, uh, uh, to go closer to the to the name, so I'm going to maybe start this at minus 0.01, and then yep, so that's a bit too far. Let me try that 0.1. So you just have to kind of play around with it a bit. Okay, so something like that, and then the fixed end. Uh, I don't know if we could probably leave it at 6.6.1, .6 something like that. And there we go. So now we've got something very similar. Um, and in this worksheet, I'm going to maybe make everything Tableau medium, and maybe I'll make it all like 11 point or no, that's too big, 10 point. Yeah, that gets pretty close. The, the font looks quite terrible on my screen. Let me see if I can somehow uh, get this font. So let me go back here, and I'm going to see if they use the same font in their article, because then I can... I can just pick the font from here. So the way that I would do that is I'm going to inspect this word. And I should be able to see the font over here on the left-hand side. 
So uh, what font did they use? Uh, let's see, you can usually tell the font. So let me try this again. Okay, so it's just, I say, so their font is called Grotesque, G-R-O-T-E-S-K. So let me see if I have that font installed. G-R-O-T. Okay, I don't have that one. So I can see if that's a free font on Google. So fonts.google.com. And I can type in grotesque. Okay, space grotesque. <clears throat> I don't think that's the same. So you see that the G here has a very rounded kind of look to it. Uh, and these do not. Okay, so what I can do is I can find um, similar fonts, maybe. Okay, let me just try this. I'm just trying to make it look as possible, as close as possible. Okay, so, okay, so it's an Adobe font. Okay. Let's see what this is here. Hopefully this isn't some spam website. So these G's are slightly different as well. That's okay. Um, I just don't really like the way this font looks. So I'm going to clear that. I still want it to be about, you know, 10 point or something, but I'm going to pick maybe. The problem is there's only certain fonts that Tableau um, supports on Tableau Public. So, uh, but I'm going to pick one that I think might look good. So maybe something like Yes, maybe something like Rubik looks good. So entire view, maybe make the lines a bit fatter. Okay, and there we go. So we've got the original visualization rebuilt. Um, okay. Okay, um, I see John Abraham said there's some issue with the sound. Is that still a problem, everybody? Uh, Okay. Okay, so I don't know if there's still a problem or not. It looks like it's okay on my end that the sound is coming through okay, but if it's still a problem, let me know and I can maybe turn the audio off and, and back on again. So sorry about that. I'm not quite sure why it's not picking it up uh, quite right. Okay, um, so that's the original. So let me just I'll call this rounded bars. That looks all right. Um, you know, you could even make the title the same if you want, or you know, whatever. Uh, so the you know, top twenty producers. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Um, the other visualization they had was kind of the one stacked on top of the other. So um, we want to look at. Uh, I think it was rigid, rigid and flexible format. Let's put those on color. And uh, I'm going to sort again. And I think their rigid format was first. So let me switch those around. And again, I'm going to format the view to have the same, that same background color again. And I'm going to format the fonts to all be that lighter color. Okay, and then in my measure names, I'm going to, so the flexible format was uh, this one here. Okay, and then the other one, so I need to go back to the report because there was the overlapping bar, the, where's those other bars that we were looking at a second ago. <coughs> okay, so there's still audio problems. Okay, one second. Sorry, it's the same way I do it every week. Let me disconnect the audio. Okay, if you could let me know if that's any better, that would be great. Um, I've just disconnected the audio and reconnected it. So uh, yeah, if you could let me know, that'd, that'd be wonderful. Okay, so I'm trying to find the other chart that we saw built that had the, the bars stacked on top of each other. Okay, it was this one here. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to Tableau and try this. And I'm going to go to the lighter shade blue. Okay, okay, and there we go. So we got something like that. Um, so hopefully the sound is uh, is better. So let me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the formatting from my rounded bar sheet and paste it here, and that just cleans up the grid lines and copies over the the uh, all the formatting, which is really nice. Saves me quite a bit of time. Okay, so yes, yeah, so that's that. Um, so I would then maybe change the, get rid of the title, do something like that. Um, all right, let's then, uh, so yeah, I, I like this one. I think this is pretty good, but what I might do here is I might extend this to then say something like, um, oh, how could I do this? Um, Maybe I could use a parameter action to allow the user to sort by either the light blue or the um, or the, the like whitish color. Because um, if I look in the sort here, you're going to see it's a manual sort. Um, what I'd like to do is be able to click on one of them. So I'm going to create a parameter, and I'm just going to call it my measure selected, and I'll make it a string. Okay. And then I'm going to, uh, on here, I'm going to create a, an action. That is a change parameter action. So I'm going to call this update measure parameter. I want to choose the measure selected and I'm going to pass to it measure names. And hit OK. So then what I should be able to do is I should be able to create a new calculated field. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do this, so sort, sorter. So I'm gonna say something like, um, uh, yeah, but I can't use, yeah, because I think if I, let me just put this here for now. And if I click on something, it should update flexible contribution format rigid format. Okay, so what I'm going to do is default properties aliases. Okay, so it's okay. Is anybody, I haven't heard from anybody yet about the audio, so could you please let me know if the audio is, is better? I can't stand how I cannot edit these. I'm clicking on this so hard and so many times and it's not letting me. There we go. Finally, after about a hundred clicks. So what I want to do now is I'm going to create a calculated field and I'm going to call this my sorter. And I'm going to say if my parameter, oh, if measure selected equals that, then I want to return the flexible format, else I want to return the, uh, okay, thank you, um, else I want to return the rigid format. Okay, so now what this is going to allow me to do is if I put this field in the in the view, let me just, uh, I'm just going to stick it on the tooltip for now, or sorry, not on the tooltip, let me click off of this. So um, you can see the value is 1.2, 1.2. So I told it my sorter is now by the rigid format. If I click on the uh, on that one, okay. So all right, that's fine. So now what I need to do is I'm going to sort by the field descending, and I'm going to sort by my sorter. Okay, so. Uh, sorter descending and that doesn't seem to have worked so let's okay that's fine okay so it's not quite working right what's going on here um, so sort 
by the field sorter, some descending. Huh. Why is that not working? Worksheet actions. Okay, measure selected. Yeah, key current value. All right, so this isn't working. So my sorter. Okay, so let me look at, let me put my parameter in here again. Actually, I'm just gonna put my parameter on detail and then stick it in the title because it'll be a bit easier to see here. Let's stick my parameter here. Okay, so rigid format. So it should be sorting by the by the light blue. Oh, it is sorting. Okay, so it is sorting by the by the light blue now. And then if I click on one of the other ones, you can see the sorting now changes to the uh, to the lighter color. So we don't need that on here. Okay, we don't need that. Um, but I really should have a total as well. So you see it's sorting. But that doesn't uh, that doesn't look very good. Okay, so so that I don't like the way that works. So I'm going to actually just sort this by um, I'm going to tell it to sort by the field total. And yeah, there we go. So again, now we have our just our total contributors. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that action because I don't think it really added much value. So let's get rid of that to make sure we don't we don't use it. Um, Okay, I don't know why the volume's messed up. Let me try. Okay, I've just tried dis disconnecting one more time, but I don't know what else to try, so it's the same thing I do every week. Um, okay, so this is the, uh, so this is just another, so this is the total, right? So this is our total bar chart. And, and then this one is going to be our um, uh, let's see this is uh, by format all right and now that I have two measures one of the things I might look at is maybe a scatter plot so I'm going to bring in the flexible format and compare that to the rigid format and then put each producer on to detail and see if there's any kind of relationship there um, there doesn't really appear to be, so that's uh, that's nothing particularly particularly useful, which is fine. Part of data analysis is to is to see if if the um, to see if there's any insight in the data. It doesn't really look like there is here because we got lots of zeros, and I think that's probably what's throwing it off a bit. So this is our scatter plot. Uh, flex versus rigid. Now maybe another thing we could look at is the total compared to the number of assets. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, and again that gives us something like that. Um, and we could maybe put a, a trend line on here. And let's see what that looks like. So it's a relatively strong correlation um, so this would be assets versus production. Now that that probably makes sense though, because you would think the more assets they have, the more they would produce. So nothing particularly surprising there. Um, all right. So this then lets me think about well, how much is produced per asset? So let's call this production per asset. And I'm going to create a calculated field, and this is going to be production per asset. And this is going to be my total contribution divided by my number of assets. Let's put the producer here, production per asset here. Okay, um, so you can see this particular company produces way more per asset then, so for example, Exxon is ranked, let's see, whatever this is here, you know, so what would Exxon's rank be? So Exxon is going to be ranked 30th in production per asset, but it's first in 
uh, just in waste produced. So, um, so this should be total contribution. Wait and see, what am I doing here? Production per asset. Wait, I think I'm doing the yes. Yeah, so that's the total. So this should, shouldn't be production. This should be contribution. Contribution per asset. Um, okay, so this is this is uh, relatively interesting as well. I'm going to again copy the formatting and paste it here. Okay, so we get something like that. Hide the fields. Okay, so that gives us uh, that gives us that. That's fine. What else could we do? So I'm going to go to now this um, this website called Dataviz Catalog, and uh, there's a couple things I could do. I could do comparisons. So we've done a bar chart, um, a box and whisker. I don't know. We could we could maybe try something like that. If we do, let's say uh, contrib. Let's see. What can we do here? Total contribution. We'll put that on detail. I change these to circles. And then I'm going to do average of random. All right, and that's going to just spread them out a bit. Okay, so this gives us a bit of a distribution here. And then if I put on a box plot for the that. That's fine. Whiskers, let's just go like that. Okay, and we can see we've got a few that are really bad outliers here. So these uh, these ones here are the biggest outliers. Okay, so that's interesting. So what we could do, I wonder if we could, so this is our whisker. Um, let me duplicate this. Um, so I wonder if there's something interesting we could do with this. Um, so let me get rid of the box plot. And what if we put in some kind of distribution band on the table? And let's say we wanted to go to uh, standard deviation. Uh, let's go from let me move this over here. We don't want to go to minus one because it doesn't make sense in this. So let's go from, uh, what if we do just do zero to one? Okay. Okay, so that's not what I was hoping for. So quantiles, percentiles. Yeah, so 90th percentile. And if I put a line in here, I just want to see where that is. So that's the 90th percentile percentages. So 60 and 80%. No, that's not what I want. So percentiles. Okay. And what's the value for this? So this is 2.2. And if I put my box plot back on here, hit OK. So this is, OK, so the, the median is 0.45. OK, 1.9. OK, so I'm not quite sure that either of these is really giving me what I'm looking for. Probably the box and whisker is giving me the most useful information. So uh, my whiskers, I'm going to just make a straight line, maybe make it a bit thicker. And the border, maybe I could get rid of the border. Yeah, I think, I think getting rid of the border is a bit nicer. Uh, the fill, I can maybe do maybe some lighter color so I could just wash it out a bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think that's that's a bit better because now at least we know if they're within the, um, the distribution. And um, yeah, and then we could maybe, we could even create a set for these. So let's create a set. These are my um, polymer producer set. So this would be my um, uh, highest producers. And hit OK. And then if I put that on color, that should make those stand out a bit better. Yeah, so that's, 
I think that works a little bit better. So what's that value? 1.9. And then this goes, okay, so that's right at the hinge. That's okay. Um, and then what I would do is I would hide that header. But we could then repeat that with some of the other metrics. So let me duplicate this. And if I put my uh, flexible format here instead, you can see a couple of them move down. And then if I put my rigid, uh, yeah. So I've, I've left the, um, the, it's still the same set based on the total, but you can then see where those same ones fit within the, the flexible. So this would be our total uh, box plot. This would be our, uh, this is our flexible box plot. And this one is the rigid. Okay. So what are some other things? So box plot, we've done the bubble chart. The So instead of a bullet graph, we could maybe do something that compares two of them. So if I put polymer producer, um, let's put uh, flexible, and then let's put rigid on detail and add rigid as a reference line. So for each cell, let's put rigid as a reference line. Okay, and then let me sort. Okay, so this just kind of helps you see this is rigid versus flexible, or sorry, flexible versus rigid. And I could maybe make a quick calculation to color them. So flex greater than rigid. And I would just say flexible format is greater than rigid format. And put that on color. And we get something like that. So most of them, yeah, almost all of them have uh, let's see, so what is the value for here? Okay, so some of these don't have a flexible format. Um, yeah, so that, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. So we can ignore that one. Um, a histogram. So what we could do then is we could look at total contribution and we could create bins and um, size of bins. So I'm going to maybe make it, I'll just make a 0.5 for now. Put that on the columns. And then the rows would be my polymer producer. So count distinct. So you can see where most of them, uh, this is the total contribution. Uh, the good thing about this then is you could add a table calculation and make it a running total. And then a secondary calculation to make it a percent of total. Okay, and then if I show the mark labels, <clears throat> so, okay, so this is the total contribution. Ah, okay, so this isn't really what I want. Um, let me go back, because this is showing most of them have 50 producers out of the 100 have between 0 and 0 0.5 on this scale. So if I go back to my total bar chart, you look at, yeah, so anything below 0.5, that's going to be 50 of them. Not that they're small producers, but um, so what we could do then is, I think what I'm going to do, I don't know if this is going to work right, so let me sort the other way around. And I'm curious to see how much these top make up of, oh no, it doesn't make sense actually to do a percent of total because this isn't, it's only the top 100, it's not everything. So this is our um, total bins. Okay, what else could we do? So we've got production. I think we've done most of the things I could think of. So we can't do a line graph. We could maybe do something like uh, not really a population pyramid, but we could create something that is, uh, so let's see, so we have the polymer producer. Let's put the flexible this way, and then I'm going to put the rigid the other way. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a minus sign in front of the rigid. Oops. 
and make this a dual axis or combined axis and move the measure names to uh, color. Okay, uh, and why is the color washed out? Oh, I think it's because of the, uh, so let's see, so let's go here. Okay, there we go. So, and then if I sort this by uh, the field, so this one might make sense to sort by the sorter. Um, but that's not going to work because we don't have, yeah, by the field. Flexible. Okay. So you could do something like that. This is just showing one versus the other, which isn't, I don't know, that's not particularly great. So this would be like a butterfly. Okay, let's see what else here. Um, uh, you could do maybe a span chart. I'm not quite sure how that's going to look. But let's see, so we could do, um, so the way to do a span chart then would be to, let's take the producer uh, and we want to put on the flexible format contribution here and make that a Gantt bar. And let's create a calculated field that is, um, uh, I think it's gonna be rigid minus flex rigid minus flexible format. And if I put that on size, yeah, there we go. So then I want to sort this by maybe the, if I sort this by the field, uh, gosh, what do we want to sort by? Descending by the total. Yeah, so this now shows you one versus the other, flex versus rigid, we could put on color. Um, and then maybe we could start playing around with the colors again. So let me paste the formatting and we'd want to maybe the, the true. Let's make that the right now let's go here. Nope, that's the wrong one. Go here. So the true, let's make that maybe the that. And then the false, let's hit OK. And then the false will make this lighter blue. OK, so this just shows you, um, so Ineos looks like, and then I'm going to put both fields, so flexible and rigid, onto the tooltip, and maybe put total on the tooltip as well. So this one here, so it looks like, so let me take that off of the tooltip. Uh, take that off of the tooltip. Okay. Yeah, so this is basically all comes from the rigid format. Okay. That's not too bad. Um, what I might do in this case then is if I put the producer onto label. Yeah, so now we have each producer on the end of the label or end of the bar, if I hide the header. Just curious to see what this looks like now in full screen. It's quite hard to read. Okay, so let me undo, take the labels off. Um, well, what if I put the labels in the middle? Let's see, let's try that. Uh oh, oh, isn't that wonderful? Tableau just crashed on me. Crapola. Okay, let me look at your questions while Tableau tries to restart. Um, um, okay. So, send error report. Let's open this. Hopefully I haven't lost too much work. I think I have. Yep, so I lost this whole... Great. So... Let me go back here. I shouldn't really have to do this. 
Uh, okay, so we have that, and then let's create that calculated field. So this is rigid minus flex. Okay, let's put that onto uh, size, and let's get rid of the tooltip. Um, and then I want rigid on the detail and total on the detail, so they all show up in the tooltip. And now I want to put flex versus rigid onto color. And now I need to pick my colors again. So the true is going to be, shoot, let's bring this back up. Okay. Make the true these. Let's make the false the lighter color. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, in case it crashes again. So makeover Monday, 2021, week 22. And what is this called again? So this is the Plastic Waste Makers Index. The Plastic Waste Makers Index. Okay. <clears throat> Now what I was trying to do, let me paste the formatting again. Okay, it didn't format this axis, that's weird. Uh, what I was trying to do was to put the polymer producer onto the label in the middle. So this is when it crashed. Let's see if we can get their crash again. Okay, so that doesn't look very good. All right, um, and then I think I sorted this by, um, if I, I could sort it by really any fields. Let's sort it by, um, let's see, let's sort it by the flexible format descending. Yeah, and then if I sort it by the rigid format, you get the blues first. Okay. And then if I sort it by the total, we get something like that. Okay. So this is our floating bar chart. Uh, right, and what were some of the other ones we could look at uh, without an axis? Uh, we can't really do a heat map. Okay. Um, we could maybe do, I don't know if this will work or not, we could maybe do um, a slope graph. So let's look at rigid versus flexible. I want to flip that around. Uh, let's make it a line and put the producer on that. And then if I put flex versus original color, yeah, that doesn't really, that doesn't tell me anything. So slope graph. Okay, so which one is, I think we've come across quite a few now. So I'm gonna paste the formatting here as well. I kind of like the look of their original. That's why I keep changing all these sheets. So we've got the rounded bars. We've got the stacked bars. Um, this is a production per asset. Our box plots. Um, so, okay, I want to try one other thing. So if I do, Okay, so that's our total bins. So let me do our flexible bins. And I'm gonna make bins again out of flexible format. So create bins. And let's maybe make these 0.5 as well. All right, let's make them 0.25 to spread them out a bit more. And I'm gonna put that in the columns and then the producers onto the rows. Okay, so we get something like that. Okay, maybe I should make it 0.5. 
uh, edit the bin, let's make a 0.5. And then let's duplicate this, and we're going to call this rigid bins. And I'm going to do the same thing on the rigid. So rigid format, default proper, uh, create bins, 0.5. And I'm going to put that here, and then I'm going to swap them around. And so, and I did like, this is rigid versus flexible. So what I could do, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, the idea, I'll just show you real quickly what my idea is. Um, so where's my scatter plot? So we've got the scatter plot, and I could put my rigid on the left and my flexible up here. So the idea is to kind of show uh, if I put a blank up here, we're trying to show sort of the distribution. Uh, so let's entire view, and then this this needs to be sorted the other way around. No, nope, undo. Let's sort. Shoot. Okay, so this kind of what this is doing is it's summarizing this section here. Um, so I, what I need to do on this rigid bins is I need to make this continuous, and then my flexible bins I need to make that continuous. Uh, no, this one needs to be continuous, and let's just make them manual the size and adjust them. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so that's not. Um, okay, uh, here we go. So what this is doing, so this bar here is summarizing the values between 0 and 0.5. So what's the value here? So that's how many? That is uh, 70 items. This is 70, okay, and then so on. So... Uh, but that could be, so let's hide the headers there, and I could hide the header here. So this is kind of like a, um, uh, a marginal histogram. You're just doing it with a scatter plot instead. But I need to make sure my scale, let me do this again. So my scales have to be the same. So this is going to go from 0 to 5.25. This needs to also go from zero. No, so this is going to go from, so let's say minus 0.2 to 5.2. Let's try that. So this one then needs to go from uh, minus 0.2 to 5.2. And then let's do the same thing on this side. Minus 0.2, 5.2. This is just going to make it a nice little square for us. So uh, at an axis, fixed is minus 0.2, 5.2. Okay, so now everything should line up nice and neat. So let's hide the header. We can hide the header. And um, I need to maybe change. I, I don't love this chart, but I'm, it is interesting to try to build it. Okay, so what size is this particular sheet here? So let's hide the title. Okay, and then the axes need to make sure the axes all line up. Okay, and those, let me just raise this so they match up. Okay. Okay, so this shows us Okay, and now maybe what I could do, I don't know if this will work or not. So let me go to my rigid bins, and I'm going to put rigid, uh, buh, buh, buh. let me try that on color. So it's going to give me a different color for each one. I don't think this is going to work. Flexible each color. 
okay. And then maybe I could color this the same way. So if I put uh, flexible and then rigid, okay, so that doesn't work. Okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, and I could maybe turn the labels on here. So this gives us kind of like a marginal histogram. So what is the size of this sheet is 442 by 415. Okay. I would normally float all of this, right? I don't know. What do you think of this? I'm not sure I love it. Okay. I think the dashboard background color format dashboard need to be that bluish color. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, yeah, so again this could be done with assets versus total production. It might be a bit more interesting. I don't know. Uh, the total box plot. That doesn't do anything. Total bins, flexible bins, dashboard. Okay, so let me let me just try the number of assets. Where's my total bins? Let's duplicate that. And let's make this number of assets default prize, create bins. Okay, so let's maybe make it uh, five. Let's put that here and then flip it and make this continuous. And in the total bins, let's make this continuous. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now, oh, so this would be our assets bins. I'm just trying to come up with something that might look sort of interesting. So let's do a new dashboard. And uh, yeah, so let me just float this in here. Okay, inner padding of about 20. Okay, format dashboard. Okay, we want that to be the background color. All right, um, title is going to be that color. All right, I'm not even gonna use the title anyway, so, oops. This is gonna be my title. And then um, I want to kind of have a four grid layout here. So I'm going to start with a vertical container. And I'm just going to put a blank in there. And let's shade the background of the blank. And I'm going to put a horizontal here. And this is going to have my, let's see, so which one goes tops of total bins? And then I'm going to put a blank next to that and distribute evenly. Okay, and then down here, I'm gonna put another that. Okay, I cannot get rid of my, my blank. And I want to put the, let's see, where is it? Uh, assets versus production compared to the assets bin. Okay, so this graph, I need to flip the axes around. And let's okay, so we get something like that. So hide, 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 hide. Okay, so 
Right, okay, so that's... Yeah, so this just tells us the... Basically, we're, this graph is just summarizing the... Yeah, oh boy. Again, not very useful. Okay, so let me go back to this scatter plot and let's duplicate this. And this time, instead of having the reference line, I'm going to put two average lines on here. So let's put two average lines. Let's format this line to be that color, maybe dashed. Let's format to be that color. All right. So then maybe what I could do here is I could highlight those that, all right, so let's create a new calculated field. So let's call this quadrant. Uh, let's say we want to call this above average um, assets. And we want to say the sum of the number of assets is greater than the window average of the sum of the number of assets. Okay, and let's put that on. Uh, no, we can leave that for now. So if I put that on color, you'll see I just get, uh, what is C here, and I need to compute using. Okay, there we go. So I get kind of colors above and below. Uh, another calculated field, let's call this one above average total contribution. So sum of total contribution is greater than the window average of the sum of total contribution. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And I want to now create a, so let's call this quadrant. And this is going to be that plus Oops, let's wrap this in a string. Okay, and now I should get my quadrants. Okay, so now I've got four colors. And maybe what I'll do is the ones on the upper right are the ones that are most concerned about. So I'm going to make those, uh, shoot, this color here. So let's do that. And then I could maybe make the upper left. So let's maybe make this a slightly different color. That's going to be that side. Um, I just need to find colors that kind of go together. All right, so I need to come use my uh, color palette generator here. All right, so. Let's see. Okay, so we could maybe save this one, so it looks like it goes well. Uh, maybe this one. And then maybe this one, so this looks good as well. And then, okay, maybe this one. Yes, yeah, so let's do this. All right, so this is going to be my upper right. 
So that's going to be these. Okay, and then my upper left, oh, oh, what did I do there? No, it's fine. My bottom left, maybe I'll make the lighter blue. That's going to be this one. And then my, okay, so this one is going to be, let's say there's low number of assets. So actually the, yeah, the bottom right should be the, so that would be bottom right would be zero and one, I believe. Yep, and then this one would be the other one. Okay, and then I'm going to make these circles. All right, so now if I go back to my dashboard, I don't love this red, so I think I need to change that. Well, maybe if I use this bright red, let's see if this makes it stand out a bit more. That's really bright. I'm just going to try a bunch of different colors here. Let me see. I've got some colors. So maybe if I try this orange, let's see what that does. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right. Um, so let's now go back to, what's this one? Okay, this is our quadrant. So let's go back to this dashboard. And let's get rid of, uh, let's see, let's put the quadrant here. Let's get rid of that sheet. And let's make these distribute evenly. And then I think these are all in the same container. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Um, and let's put the, it's gonna put another vertical container here with a blank. And what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna put this up there, put this one there, get rid of the blank. Because now what I can do is I can select that container that container and then I can make them even. Let's see, distribute, okay, yep. Okay, um, so I think that might be okay. But I'm not quite sure about the colors here. Um, Hmm. What if I just make this? Um, hmm. Okay, let me try something else. New dashboard. Okay, so maybe I could focus just on this here. So let me lasso these. So this is 20. Okay, so I need to edit this. I want to get rid of the average line. Or no, I want to not show the label. No tooltip, or turn off the recalculate. 
edit. Okay, so, and I'm going to maybe put in a annotate area, 20. Let's maybe make this nice and big, or maybe I should make it the same color orange. Let's see. What colors? No, I think I use this orange here. Let's maybe make this like 48 point, maybe 56 even, 60. 72, let's see, uh, bold, because so then what I can do is I can background, oh, let's see, I need to format this, uh, no shading, maybe I'll put a light border around it, let's see what that looks like, line, none. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think I can get rid of the border and the font. I think I need to wash out just a bit. So let me go to uh, this. And I think I should be able to wash it out just a tiny bit. Let's try that. I just don't want it to be quite so bold. Oh, I did that here. Okay. Okay, so that's 20 companies, but what am I trying to say here? Um, I want to get rid of that in the tooltip. Number of assets, total contribution. Hmm. Still don't think that's great. Uh, oh boy, I'm stuck. Because what we want to look at is, where's my other? No, so it's not that one. So this is basically high numbers. So the upper right is a high number of assets that also produced a high number of waste, high amount of waste. And there's 100 marks, so 20%. Okay, let me just see if I can play around with a title or something. So this is something like a uh, high so this is high production high assets. That's kind of what I'm trying to figure out how to word. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different here. So I'm going to, come on, I'm going to highlight these marks and I'm going to create a set. So this is high, high. Okay, 
And then instead of having the quadrant on the color, I'm going to have high, high on color. So then I just get two colors. And now I could go to here. Let's see, so I pick that one. Okay, so now I'm focusing on just those 20. All right, now I need to come up with some way to kind of phrase this. Um, okay, so let's see. How can I? Just trying to think of a way to word this and then I'll be done. That's not. Sometimes these really small data sets are the, because probably a bar chart actually is still the best. So let's make these circles. So this might be the best one to use. Okay, so format. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this now, and I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to bring in this one instead. What's it called? Scatter plot. Size is the dashboard, 800 by 700. Okay. So now I could say 20 companies. Um, This is the plastic 
paste makers index. This is Okay, and then I'm going to show my caption. So data source is Mindaru. Okay, um, so what do you think? I'd be curious to see your thoughts. Um, yeah, again, a pretty big struggle with this data set, um, but that's okay. They're not all they're not all perfect. Um, I think maybe I'll make this title slightly bigger. Yeah, that makes it a bit more prominent, and I probably should have it maybe. Okay, that looks a bit, that's more square. Okay, I think that's it. I'm, I need to stop there. It's a uh, it's a holiday today. Um, for those of you that have today either as a bank holiday or a Memorial Day, uh, enjoy the day off. Um, for everybody uh, watching in, in India, please stay safe. Uh, I know the virus is spreading like crazy there. Um, the area I live in in London is the uh, highest effect that is now. There's a large Indian population here. So um, yeah, that's, it's spreading pretty, pretty quickly here as well. But everybody be safe. Have a great holiday. And I'll be back soon. Have a great day.